hey, it's Shannon Heaton. I'm here to play a bit of music, but also to tell you about the Irish Music Stories podcast. It's not just about Irish music. You don't have to know anything about traditional music to listen. Like, maybe you just like well-produced stories. Or maybe it inspires you to think about creativity and expression. Or maybe you love Scottish accents or Irish humor. Or maybe you drive a lot or run a lot and you're looking for something to accompany all those miles. Irish music stories might fit the bill. So in this podcast, you'll hear from professional entertainers for sure. And you'll also hear stories about people like Cormac Guy, a young Ellen Piper from Boston who competed in the 2015 All-Ireland Flaw. Cormac talks about his experiences at the big Irish music competition in Sligo, but also what it meant to him and what it meant to all the parents and the teachers and the other kids who competed, who were part of this journey. I'm going to play a few minutes from the episode about Cormac's trip to Sligo. You can hear the full episode, and you can read transcripts in English and in Japanese at irishmusicstories.org. And while you listen, I'm going to play a few more tunes. <laughs> Whether you already play the fiddle, or you don't know anything about traditional music or dance, this story, and the amazing and incredibly charming people you'll meet, well, it's not just about Ireland and Irish music. But Irish music is where the story begins, and Cormac loves playing it. Now his dad is from Ireland, but Cormac was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he's met a lot of other kids through the local cultist branch, which offers music classes at St. Column Kells Partnership School in Brighton, Mass. During the week, St. Column Kells is a Catholic grade school, and for six hours every Saturday, it becomes an Irish music zone for students of all ages. When you walk down the halls, you hear people speaking Irish. There are signs on all the classroom doors for the various instrument classes. I'm right outside Maureen Nikada's room. She teaches Shannos, or old style singing. First, first. So I'm walking in to Maureen's class. Hi, Maureen. Hello, nice to see you. Hello, Kathy Wistel. For a second. Do you mind? No. no. If I sit on you. I asked Maureen, as the Irish speaker in the room, to define cultus. Cultus culturi Aden. Cultus means a gathering or a um, group. It's a gathering of everybody who is interested in the Irish culture, be it uh, whatever instrument or our traditional style of singing. Is this serious business? Oh, yes. Very serious business. <laughs> <laughs> and you teach children that there's a, a wonderful world outside um, America's Got Talent <laughs> out there. <laughs> there are now 420 cultist branches all over the world. The head office is in Dublin's Monkstown neighborhood. So I hopped across the pond from Boston to Dublin. My friend Lisa Coyne and I rented a car. In fact, our car rental guy reminded us with a wink to drive on the right. He gave us this moment, we both looked pretty puzzled, before he said, gotcha. Man, welcome to Ireland. No car company would joke about the side of the road in the States. So we drove, on the left, to the head cultist office, just a few blocks in from the coast. Now Lisa knows all about cultists. Her kids play fiddle and accordion, and they've been in classes along with Cormac. Lisa herself has taught flute and whistle in Brighton. When we arrived at Cultus HQ in Dublin, Lisa looked over the new trad releases in the storefront. Administrator and flute player Siobhan Nikonaron took me up to the second floor. We chatted in a classroom with a massive ceiling. She talked about how Cultus has grown over the years. 1951 was the foundation of Cultus Kultur in, in Mullingar. With, there was a whole joining of people of like-minded ideals and commitment to the music. And it, it grew from that to the extent that it is now an international organization with um, 420 branches. So Cultus is the institutionalized arm of Irish music. And one focus for many of the branches is preparation for the regional contests. First and second place provincial winners can go on to compete at the All-Ireland FLA. Well, FLA Cionn is a phenomenal undertaking. At its core, of course, we have the competitions. And all of these competitors come from the world over, having qualified from their various provincial qualifying for the And then what would be, say, a very popular event at the All-Ireland? Um, obviously, the, the reputation and the whole awareness of the Senior Cayley Band competition, it's a given that at this stage it's seen as the accolade. The Cayley Band. It's the Irish version of a big band, 
formed in pre-amplification days to play in dance halls, Cayley bands feature fiddles, accordions, flutes, banjos, concertinas, ilum pipes, all playing unison melodies with a rhythm section of piano and minimal drum kit, with occasional woodblock. Cayley bands are still a big thing, and at the All-Ireland Flaw, it's sort of like the figure skating of the Irish Music Olympics. Once all the solo and duo contests and singing rounds have played out, participants pile into a big venue to take in the hotly contested Cayley Band Championship to see who will be knighted king of the Cayley Bands that year. I mean, when you see the photo of the 2015 All-Ireland winners, the Shandrum Cayley Band from Cork, the guys are all wearing black pants, vests, and Chuck All-Stars and they have awesome haircuts. And the women are all wearing matching blue dresses. It could totally be an ad for a mobile phone network, only they're all holding accordions and fiddles. You know, we're, we're delighted that that competition has reached the profile that it has. Um, an awful very large number of musicians would have been very involved in the Groupie Kyo competition for many years, which offered the scope, you know, the potential for upwards of 20 people to take part rather than 10. That's the kind of group that Cormac and the kids in Boston formed. They did it with the help of teachers at St. Colm Kell School in Brighton, Mass, and with concertina player Mary McNamara and Tulla. After Lisa and I wrapped up our visit at the Dublin Colta School, we headed to County Clare to visit Mary. From her home in Tulla, Mary teaches concertina and prepares students to compete. She has help from Alan Kelly on flute and her daughter Sorka and Eileen O'Brien on fiddle. They follow cultist rules, but they're totally independent. And in addition to preparing students for the flaw, Mary also organizes music exchanges between her students in Tulla and groups abroad, like the Shetland Islands, Norway, and Boston with Cormac and his peers. I had a chance to speak with Mary and her husband Kevin about the Boston Exchange in their kitchen. It was a great experience because for most of them they would never have been in, um, probably out of the country before, certainly not in America. The best memories for them is being on the, in the underground trains. <laughs> they just could not, and every day we had three and four of them to take. And trying to get 30 people on and 30 people off at the right time, at the right station, and, and we were constantly counting and they thought it was very exciting. Well, when they came here then, they were staying in Bodike in the middle of the countryside and uh, we had a big 59-seater coach. Oh, yeah. And the problem was was to get the 59-seater coach down the little bog road to the cottages where we were staying. So all the, all the Boston kids are looking out the window saying, look, there's grass in the middle of the road and the bus can barely fit. <laughs> so it's from that to the underground in Boston. So, I mean, that, that, I think for both sets of kids, that was the, the thrill. Right. The difference in between both places, you know, the experience of how to get from A to B. Cormac and his friends back in Boston stayed busy. Well, now what do we do? We've got all these tunes lying around. Might as well do something for those tunes that we had. So, just pulled together the group. They pulled the group together with a lot of help with help from fiddle player Sean Cloacy, who coached the kids and arranged for them to compete in the Mid-Atlantic Flaw. Tin whistle player Kathleen Keneally and other cultist teachers chipped in. They helped prepare the Boston Groupie Kyo. They'd enter in the U15 category, the under 15 category for 12 to 15 year olds. But some of the kids weren't even 12. So really, some were punching above their weight. They called the group Rialta Gala, which is Irish for bright stars. Now, taking a group down to New Jersey to compete, this was kind of a big deal for Boston. Unlike their competitors in Pearl River, New York, and St. Cecilia's Parish in New Jersey, Boston didn't have a track record of competing. Anyway, so I figured we'd just head down there just to meet some people, just for the fun of it. Nobody expected Boston to win. They were in it for the experience and the learning and the hotel pool.
So how did it turn out for Cormac and the Rialta Gala Gang? Listen to Irish Music Stories Episode 1, Trip to Sligo, and find out. Thank you.